Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM World of Watson 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at the Mandalay Bay at the IBM World of Watson. This is Silicon Angles Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my mm -hmm. co-host Dave Vellante for the two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Our next guest is Michelle Peluso, who's the Chief Marketing Officer for IBM. Uh, new to the company, fairly new within yes. the past year. Yes. Welcome to the Cube. Past month. Past month. <laughs> <laughs> I yes. can't keep track of all these new hires. A lot of new blood coming into IBM, but this is a theme we heard from yeah. Staples. To be agile, to be fast. You're new, what's, what's your impressions and what's your mandate yeah. for the brand? I mean, IBM, strong brand, but yes, what's yeah. the future look well, like? Well look, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm thrilled to be here because this is an extraordinary company that makes real difference in the world, right? And that, I think, you, you feel it here at the world of Watson, the sort of everyday ways that Watson and IBM touches consumers, touches end users, makes their health better, you know, allows them to have greater experiences. So, so that's incredible to be part of an iconic company Having said that, and, and exactly to your point, it's a time of acceleration and change for everyone, and IBM is not immune to that. And so my mandate here, and my remit here, and, and coming in, and being a huge fan of what IBM has, is to say, well, how do we sharpen our messaging? How do we, be, I almost feel like a challenger brand. You know, how do we think about what Watson can do for people, what the cloud can do, what our services business can do, and how is that distinctive and differentiated from everybody else out there? And I think we have an incredible amount of assets to play with. Um, that's got to be through the line. You know, it's no longer the case that we can have a message on TV and that, you know, attracts yeah. the world. The digital experiences they're having every single day, when they're clicking through on an ad, when they're chatting yeah. with somebody, when they're calling our call center, when they have a sales interaction, is that differentiated messaging and that brand resonant all the way through. Second thing is marketing has become much more of a science, you know, and that to me is super exciting. I've been a CEO most of my career, um, and you know, the, the notion that marketing has to drive revenue, that marketing has to drive retention and loyalty and expansion, that we can come to the table with much more science in terms of what things are most effective in making sure that more clients love us more deeply for longer. <laughs> I got to ask you the question, because we had, we've had many conversations with Kevin Egan was just here, we met, he was yeah. on last year. Bob Lord, the new chief digital officer on. We talked to your customers. Kind of the proof points in today's market is about transparency, yeah. and if you're not a digital company, how could you expect yeah. customers to, to work oh, with course, you? Of so course. this has been a big theme for IBM. You yes. guys are hyper-focused on being a digital company. Yes, yes. And how does that affect the brand, yep. the brand contract with the users? What's your thoughts on that? Well, first of all, Bob Lord is awesome. We've known each other for 10 years, so it's so wonderful to be working with him again, and, and Dave Kenny as well. Um, I think that the, at the end of the day, consumers have experiences, and, and you know, think of every business owner out there as a consumer, and they're having experiences all the time. Their expectations are being shaped by the fact that they can go on Amazon and get prime delivery, right? Their expectations are being shaped by, they can go on Netflix and get you know, personalized recommendations yeah. for them or Spotify. And so our job, of course, and we have some of the greatest technical minds in the world, is to make sure that every experience lines up with the highest of their expectations. Yeah. And so much of that is digital. And so my, my passion, my background is entirely in the digital space. Uh, I was CEO of Travelocity and then CEO of Guild, Chief Marketing and Digital Officer at Citigroup. So the notion that you know, the world's greatest digital experience is, is something I'm very passionate about. So you mentioned, <clears throat> Michelle, the sort of big TV ads, and you think of the Smarter Planet, which was so effective, but it was yeah. this big TV campaign. So, yeah. so you, what's, the, what's the sort of strategy that you're envisioning? Is mm -hmm. it sort of digital breadcrumbs? And maybe you could talk about that a little yeah. bit. Yeah, well think about Watson. It's a perfect place to think about the Watson branding. What does Watson really mean, right? Watson is, and Ginny has said this so well, of course it's cognitive and, and cloud, but at the end of the day, it's about helping people make better decisions. And so you can do some advertising with Watson and Bob Dylan, and Watson and you know, the young, young girl and Serena, and, and you can get that messaging high, but then you've got to bring it all the way through. So that's why something like this is so powerful to see Woodside up there, or Ollie, or all these companies talking about staples, how they are using Watson embedded in their processes, their tools to make their end users experiences better, and how nobody else could do this for them the way Watson's yep. doing it. That's taking a brand on high, an advertising message on high, and delivering value for, for businesses, for patients, for consumers, yep. Um, all the way through. That's what we have to do. I got to ask you about that ad advertising trends. Obviously, we all see ad blocker in the news, 
digital is a completely different new infrastructure kind sure. of dynamic with social and whatnot. Um, you know, talk about, uh, Bob and I were talking last night about it too. You, and Trevor, you know, banner ads are all out there, impression <laughs> based, and then coded URLs to a landing page, email yep. marketing. Not going to go away anytime soon, but it's changing rapidly where you sure. have now new channels. Yeah. What's your thoughts? Because this is now a new kind of ROI equation. Is there any thoughts on how you look at that? And is it going to integrate into the top level campaigns? How are you looking at the new digital, the, the cutting edge I digital have stuff? I huge amounts of thoughts on this topic. Yeah, yeah, we do too. Incredibly <laughs> passionate about this topic. So I think, you know, if you think back 15, 20 years ago, there were always something called market mix modeling, which held uh, advertisers and marketers to understand the effectiveness of their TV campaigns, and frankly, not too dissimilar from Nielsen. You know, there was a, there was art and science at best in it, and then all of a sudden the digital world evolved, and you could get at a tactical level very, very clear about attribution and whether you drove something. <clears throat> the challenge for us now is much more sophisticated models that are multi-touch attribution because the reality is an average consumer doesn't do one thing or have one interaction with a brand. Mm -hmm. They're going to see a TV show and watch a commercial. While they're watching that commercial, that business user or that end consumer is on their iPad or on their phone. They're seeing a digital ad. The next day at work, they're being retargeted because they were at some company. They search for something. They see a search campaign. Our job is to connect those dots and understand what really moved that consumer or that business user to take an action. And there are many sophisticated multi-touch attribution models where you model you know, a standard set of behaviors and you test correlations against a bunch of different behaviors so you understand of what I did, of all the money I spent, what really drove impact, and by cohort. I think that's the other, you know, there's no more of the sense of sort of aggregated everything. You really have to break it out yeah. by audience space, by cohort, to see what moves the needle. And improve that experience, right? Which has been mixed. Of course. Right? I mean, you, you, you gave the example the other day of the Hilton. Give, you know, the retargeting. You, you already know that the, retarget, the hotel was full. <laughs> sure. So, so uh, um, Obviously Watson plays a, a role in that, Absolutely. and data plays a role in that, so. It's all about data, it's all about, you know, that's where I think Watson can be extraordinarily helpful. So if you think about the tools yeah. a marketer has, they're becoming more and more yeah. sophisticated, and retargeting was something, I don't know, 10 years ago, whenever it was introduced, that helped all of us a little bit in getting that message, yeah. but it is only as good as the APIs behind it and the, the experience behind it. When, now, when I was at Gilt, I was CEO of Gilt, we would put over 1,000 products on sale every day that would be sold out by the next day. Sales down, it's a 24-hour flash sale. We had to get really, really good at knowing how to uh, how to retarget because last thing you want is to retarget something that's sold out, right, or gone the yeah. next day. And understand the user that was in and out and they're coming back and of course. understanding that cohort. But that's where Watson to yeah. me is very exciting and you probably saw this in some of the demos of where Watson can yeah. help marketers. You know, where Watson can, can really understand what are the drivers of behavior and what is likely to drive the highest propensity well, Why action. were you so successful at Guild and, and how are the challenges different here? Is it because yeah. it was a sort of relatively na more narrow community? Or I, I well, I did this at Citigroup too, so I was yeah, Global okay. Chief Marketing and Digital officer at Citigroup and, and you know, a, tr a tremendous budget and, and a lot of transactions you have to drive every day. A lot of people you want to open credit cards and bank accounts <laughs> and so around the world. I think that the, the relentless focus on, on marketing being art and science, you know, art and science. And I think that's, you know, that passion for analytics, passion for measurement, having yeah. been a CEO, that passion for being able to say, this is what we're doing and this is what we're driving. So you, critical. you've been kind of a data geek in your career. You mentioned yes. the financial <laughs> services, you have to measure everything. But back to the ad question, you know, yeah. the old so saying used to be, um, I'm wasting half my advertising, I just don't know which half. Yeah, <laughs> right. percent of my advertising is wasted. But now for the first time in the history of business, in, in the modern era, you yeah. can measure everything That's online. Right. That's right. So does that change your view and the prism of how you look at the business, because you mentioned multi-touch. Yeah. So now, does that change the accountability for the suppliers? I mean, ad agencies doing the big campaign. Of well, course. it's working, you know, trust of course. me. Well, you know? look, I think it changes the game for all of us, and there's no destination. This is every day you can get better at optimizing your budget. And, and I would be the first to tell you, as much of a sort of engineering and, and data geek as I've always been, <laughs> and take pride in, um, the reality is there is art even in those attribution models. What yeah. look back windows you choose, et cetera. You know, you're making decisions as a company. But once you make those decisions, you can start arraying yeah. all of your campaigns campaigns and saying what really moved the needle, what was most effective. That's not an indictment, that's yeah. a what, what are we going to do differently tomorrow. You know, the best marketers are always optimizing, they're always figuring out at what point in the funnel can we get better tomorrow. 
want to ask you about talent, because that's one of the things that um, we always talk about. Yeah. And also get your thoughts on women in technology, STEAM. Great. We were just at Grace Hopper last week, and uh, we started a fellowship called the Tech Truth, and we're doing, it's a real passion mm -hmm. area for us. Yeah. We have a site at cube365.net slash women in tech. All women interviews, we're really trying to get the word out. Mm -hmm. But this is now a, um, a big issue, because now it's not STEM anymore, it's STEAM, arts is yeah. in there. Yeah. And we were also talking about the virtual reality, augmented reality mm -hmm. user experience is now potentially going to come into the immersion experience. Yeah. And there's not enough artists. Yeah. So you start to see a combination of new discipline talents that mm -hmm. are needed in the professions, as well as the role of women in technology. Yeah. Your thoughts on that, because this is a, you've been very successful. What's your view on that? What's your thoughts? Well, first of all, thank you for what you're doing, right? It, it, it takes a lot of people up there saying that this is important to make a difference. So, so most of all, thank you. Thank um, you. You know, I think that this, this is obviously a place I've been passionate about forever. I remember being a CEO um, and being pregnant and that becoming this huge you know, issue and news story and you're trying to juggle it, right? Oh and my God. How could a woman CEO be pregnant? So, so, so oh this God. is something. Yeah, yeah. Tragedy, <laughs> I mean, come on, it's so funny yeah. how people are ridiculous. But it was kind of a first yeah. well, at the time, uh, yeah. you know? Right. And yeah. so it was, it was, took attention. But, um, but I think that the point is that, um, the, the advantages a company has when there are great women in engineering and great women in data science and great women in user experience and design are just palpable. They're palpable in a variety of ways, right? One, the team thinks differently. The team is more creative. The team is more open to new ideas. The output for the customers are better, right? I mean, we just saw Snapchat today just announced that in 2013, 70% of their users were women. So all the early adopters were women. Yeah. You know, now it's balanced, but the early the early crowd were women, and so we have got to figure out how to break some of those divides. Now, I'm incredibly encouraged, though. While we still have a long way to go, the numbers yeah. would suggest that, we're having the conversation more and more, and women are starting to see other women like them that they want to be it's like. It's a global narrative, which is, again, why we're putting some journalists on there and funding it as a, a just a, as a fellowship, because this, it's a global story, yes. yeah. okay, and the power women. Yeah. I mean, it's like, there are real coders and this real talent yeah. coming in, and the big th theme that came out of that was is that 50% of the consumers yeah. of product are women, so therefore they should have some women features Imagine and related, that. some vibe in there, not just a male software driven yeah. concept. Well, yeah. and should too, when a powerful individual, male individual like Satya, you know, steps in it and, yeah. and, and you know, understands yeah. what the mistake is, and someone like You're referring Benny, to his speech two years ago at the Where uh, he Grace said Hopper. that you should just, yep. it's bad karma, don't yep. speak up. And yep. <laughs> Women were like, no way. And then Benioff this year, you know, saying, okay, opening up transparency. He got some heat yeah. for that talk, as you probably know. Yes, but I yeah. in my opinion, it's, it's, it's a positive step when an individual like that who's powerful and opening transparency within yeah. their company. Yeah. You know, that's a well, step look, in the I right direction. I think a lot of it is that great networking. I host a, core, I've been doing this for years and years with a good friend of mine, Susan Line from AOL. We host a quarterly breakfast for women in tech uh, every, every quarter in New York City, and we've been doing it for a long time. It's amazing when those women come together, the conversations we have, the discussions mm -hmm. we have about how to help each other and support each other, and so that's, that's a real passion of mine We were in too. Boston a few weeks ago for the Data Science Summit, mm -hmm. uh, which Bob Picciano was hosting, and, and one of the folks was hosting the Data Divas Breakfast. <laughs> and we a couple, there were a couple of Data dudes who walked in, and it was interesting. Yeah. The perspective is 25% of the women, or, or the chief data officers, yeah. were, were women, mm -hmm. which was an interesting discussion as well. So, Great. Oh, maybe well, I was a, one, they, one of 1,000 men at 15,000 <laughs> women around me. There's no line for the men's room. Um, so the women's line was, <laughs> you know, as you see that at Tech Arts, no, but it's certainly changing. I want to get back to the um, mentoring thing, because one of the things that we're yeah. also passionate about is, you've been a pioneer, yeah. okay? So, now there's now an onboarding of new talent, new personas, new professions are being developed because we're mm -hmm. seeing a new type of developer, we're seeing new types of, uh, I would say, artists becoming either CG, mm -hmm. so there's new tech careers that weren't around and a lot of the new jobs that mm -hmm. are going to be coming online haven't even been invented yet. Right. So you see cognition and what cognitive's Absolutely. enabling yeah. is a new application of skills. Yep. Can you have thoughts on that? Because this is an onboarding opportunity, so this could change the, the number percentage of That's women in diversity. Yeah. When you think about what, the, I mean, it, it's clear, your notion of STEAM, right, your notion of STEM, that is a male and female phenomenon. That yeah. is what this country needs, it's what this world needs more of, and so there's a policy, an education, obligation that all of us have to the next generation to say, let's make sure we're doing right by them in terms of education and job opportunities. When you think about onboarding, I mean, to me, the, the biggest thing about onboarding 
thing is the world is so much more interconnected than it used to be. If you're a marketer, it's not just art or science. You have to do both. It's that right yeah. brain, left brain connectivity. Yeah. And I think 10, 20 years ago, you could grow up in a discipline that was functional and maybe siloed and maybe you were great at left brain or great at right brain and the world demands so much more, it's a faster pace, it's an accelerated pace and the interconnection is critical. At IBM one of the things we're doing is we're putting together these diamond teams and I think it's going to really help lead the industry. Diamond teams are when you have on every small agile marketing team an analytics head, a product marketing head, a portfolio marketing head, a designer, a social expert, these small pods that work on campaigns gone are the days that you could say, designer designs it, product comes up with a concept, then it goes to a design team, then it goes to a production team, then it goes to an analytics team. We're forcing this issue by putting these teams together and saying you work together every day. Mm -hmm. You'll get a good sense of where the specialty is and how you learn how to make your own discipline better because you've got the analytics person sitting there. I want to ask you a question about um, uh, media buying and media planning, advertising, as we're seeing this new real-time web, web yeah. world, mobile world go out. The old days of plan, media buys, yeah. place yeah. the advertisement was a pacing item for sure. execution. Yep. Now things, you mentioned in the guild, flash sales. So now you're seeing new Every day. flash yeah. opportunities to glob onto an opportunity, could be engagement, yeah. and create a campaign on the fly. Yeah, Is so that a vision of you guys? I mean, do you see that? And does it change the cadence of how you guys do your execution? Of course, of course, and that's one of the reasons we're moving to this diamond team in Agile. I think Agile will ultimately be as impactful to marketing as it was to engineering and, and development. And so I think that, um, of course, and that has to start with great modeling and great attribution, because yeah. you have to know where things are performing so that you can iterate all the time. I mean, I, I believe in a world where you don't have marketing budgets, and I know that sounds insane, but I believe in a world where you set target ranges on what you think you're going to spend at the beginning of the year, and every week, like an accordion, you're optimizing spend based shipping on code. campaign effectiveness. Shipping marketing. Exactly. You're shipping you're right. marketing like code. With, so much yeah. of marketing is just, it's episodic. You boom, yes. and then it dies, and boom, yep. and it's like on to the next one, and you're talking about something yeah. that's Agile much more Agile marketing, ongoing. I love that. It's and like then the, the personas, to your point, are much more fluid as well. You got millennials just creating their own vocations. So. Yes, well, and this is where I think consumer companies have led the path, and you know, when yep. you think about a lot of B2B companies, we've had this aggregated CIO type buyer, and now we've got to get much more sophisticated yeah. about what does the developer want? You know, what's important to the developer? The messaging, the tools, the capabilities, the user experience. What about the marketer? You know, or what about the person in financial services? And so both industry and professional disciplines And, and you know, you have the tooling now with growing. Watson. You don't have to guess what they want. You can actually just ask them. Yeah, right? well, you can actually, it's a huge advantage. <laughs> you, can, you can actually <laughs> observe the observation space is now addressable. Right, and So you pull that in and say, they're interested in this. What are they clicking this. at? What are they reading? And, and what are they doing when they're here at World of Watson? Yeah. And that's super important that even the stereotype of the persona is changing. You've been saying all week that the developer is increasingly becoming business oriented. Of maybe course. they don't they want maybe they don't want to go back and get their MBA, yeah. but they want to learn about CapEx versus OpEx and, and sure. that's relevant to them. And they well, have they're fast revolutionaries. Learners. The best developers are yeah, revolutionaries. Right. Yeah. And to be a revolutionary you have to understand the impact, right? And and, and they want to ship code, they want to change the yeah. world. I mean that is every engineering team I've ever worked with and I've only worked with I mean I've been as close to engineering as it is from yeah. day one of the internet or early on in the internet great engineers are revolutionaries. They yeah. want to change the world. Yeah. And they to change the world, they want to have a broader and broader understanding of what levers are at their disposal. And I will say that I, you know, and I am, one of the reasons I came to IBM is I am passionate about this point. Technology cannot be in the hands of a few companies on the West Coast who are trying to control and dominate the experience. Technology has yeah. to exist for all those amazing developers everywhere in the world who, who will make a difference to end users. Well, this is healthcare. IBM's Strategy. You actually have a big presence on the West Coast, also in, in uh, yeah. Germany. So you guys are going to where the action centers are, but not trying to just be Silicon no, Valley. No, my point is, what, exactly, because my point is IBM has always been there for making businesses stronger and better. Yeah. We don't monetize their data, that's not our thing. Our thing is to use our cloud, our cognitive capabilities in Watson to make actual businesses better so that ultimately consumers have better health care and better results. I know you're new on the job, so this is not a trick question, just kind of a more conversational. As you talked to Bob Lord, <laughs> Bob Picciano, Jeannie, yeah. uh, what's the promise of the brand? And it used to be back in the days when, you know, Bob Picciano were talking about when we, I worked at IBM in the 80s, co-op student, and it was, you'll never get fired for buying IBM, was the old <laughs> mainframe kind of concept. But it's yeah. evolved, and obviously we see a smarter plan. What's the brand promise now? Look, what do you guys talk about? What's the I brainstorming? I put that on its head. I think the, I think the greatest innovators the world, the most passionate business leaders of tomorrow, um, come to IBM to make the world better. Um, and I, 
Um, I believe this is a brand for the forward, the forward lookers, the risk takers, yeah. the you know the makers. Um, I think that you come to IBM because there's extraordinary assets and industry knowledge, real humans, real relationships, and that we exist to make your business better. Not you know, our business will be a byproduct. We exist to make your business better. That has always been where IBM has been strong. You know, it's interesting. That brings up a good point. We're just riffing on that. Dave and I were just observing, you know, at the Grace Hopper with our Tech Truth Fellowship, mm -hmm. which is uh, promoting the intersection of technology and social justice, you're seeing that mission yeah. of technology, business value, and yeah. social justice as an integral part of strategies yes. because now the consumer access, the consumerization of business, yeah, yeah. software-based, well, is now part of that feedback. I mean, you're not doing good. Millennials demand it. I mean, yeah. millennials now, when you look at the research and the next generation behind millennials are very, very, you know, they want to know what are you doing for the world. Yeah. I mean, who could do a 60 minute show besides IBM? Who could, ha who could be on 60 minutes yeah. changing cancer, changing cancer outcomes for people beside IBM? That, that is an extraordinary testament to what the brand is and how it comes to life every day. And that's important for millennials. Well, and we had Mary Glick, uh, Glacklin on yesterday. She mm -hmm. is so impressive. She, we were talking about how the, these ozone layers getting smaller. Yeah. These are pro solve, uh, problems that can be solved. They have to be so, solved. So you know, climate change can be solved. So yes. the whole getting the data, and she's yep. by the company, so she's got a visit, view on that, yep. is interesting. Her point is, if we know what the problems are, we as a community global society can actually solve them. Completely, and it's an, you know, the, the more we make this apolitical, and we say here is a problem, and we yeah. have the data, and we have the tools, and we have the people and capabilities to solve it, that is where IBM stands tallest. Well, okay. I think with Watson, you focused on some big, hairy problems yeah. to start with, and yeah. now you're knocking off some, some of them, you know, maybe more mundane, but right. obviously significant to a marketer. But or isn't whomever. it incredible that a company can start with the hardest, most complicated problems the world has and actually make a difference? My final question, I asked Mary this yesterday and she kind of talked about if she could have the magic Watson algorithm to just do something magical for her, <laughs> um, and what would it be? And she said, <laughs> I'd send Watson to the archives of all the weather data uh -huh. going back to World War II just compile it all and bring it back yeah. for addressability. So the question is, if you could have a magic Watson algorithm for your uh, chief marketing officer job, what would you mm -hmm. assign it to do? Like, what would it be its like first task? Well, first of all, my, my initial reaction, of course, I'm a mom of six-year-olds and eight-year-old, and so I want Watson to optimize my time. <laughs> for a, for do drop-offs, too. You know, exactly, exactly. That's my problem. Yeah, you know? exactly. Spend 30 seconds plus brushing your teeth, it's going to be okay. <laughs> so 30 more seconds with yeah. the kids. Um, no, but as a, a chief marketing officer, I mean, I think it really does go back to getting Watson's help in understanding how we use a dollar better, how we use a dollar smarter, how we affect more customers and, and, um, and connect connect with more customers and the way we mm -hmm. you know we, we communicate the way we engage the way we put our programs out that would be extraordinary yeah. and that's possible that's becoming more and more possible you know bringing science into the art of marketing um, I think will have great impact on what we're doing and also just the world I mean nobody wants to have you know yeah. be retargeted ten yeah. times for something that's sold out well we, and we have some more time here so I got some more couple more questions because since we're not getting the hook yet um, <laughs> I got to ask you so you mentioned travel also you know the web you've been through the web 1.0 yes. 2.0 yeah, yeah. and so on so URLs and managing URLs was a great mm -hmm. tracking mechanism from the old impressions weren't working yep. go to call to action <laughs> get the hook right there <laughs> <laughs> um, but now we different where that world has kind of like become critical infrastructure for managing yeah. um, technology um, since you're kind of geeking out with us here what's your view of the API economy because now Sure. Apps don't use URLs, they yeah. use tokens, they use APIs, they sure. use new push notification based stuff. What's your, how does APIs change the marketing opportunity? It changes both, right? It clearly changes the engineering environment and sort of opens up the world of, of possibilities in terms of who you partner with and how, et cetera. And I think it changes the marketing world too, entirely, right? You think about the API economy and the access you have to new ways of doing business, new potential partnerships, new ways of understanding data. It, you know, that, that is absolutely you know, at the fore of a lot of our thinking. Yeah, it might change the agency relationships too if they got to be more technical yeah. in, in working with you guys. I think agencies are changing as, as much and as fast as companies are, and they have to. You know, they are an extension. They are your best. Yeah. You should be able to look in a room of agency and your team and not know who is who. When you can tell who is who, you have a problem. And so agencies themselves have to become you know, way more scientific, harder hitting, faster paced, and outcomes oriented. Some agencies now are saying, you know what? 
pay me on outcomes. And I love that. I love that mode to say, we're in yeah. the boat with you, pay me on outcomes. And the big SIs are right there too. It's, yeah, absolutely, it's yeah. yes. Michelle Peluso, new chief marketing officer at IBM, changing the game, bringing some great mojo to uh, IBM. They're lucky to have you. Thank you very much, Great guys. conversation. Pleasure. Thanks for coming Thank on theCUBE. Live at Mandalay Bay, this is SiliconANGLE's theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Be right back with more after this short break.